Kiora. Kiora. On Kiora. Kiora. G'day. <laughs> Welcome, Ron and Jenna. Back to Australia. I suspect Australia's going to be your second home in the next 18 months or so, so welcome back. It's lovely to see you. Phil, thanks for your welcome, mate. I do note the friendliness of the area, but I felt your Brumbies were a bit too friendly a week or so ago. <laughs> Nobody loses to the Blues, that's kind of nice. <laughs> Everyone in Queensland, the fullest rugby union was here. Thanks, Noel, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in. You know, what I think has been one of the more successful recent innovations in Rotary in Australia with this weekend. I think the chance for Rotarians to come together uh, and share experiences and ensure they have got the current information is just awesome. The fact this event can attract the President-elect here says that Evanston and senior staff now from Evanston, that says that people are looking at what we're doing here and offering to help and provide that current information. I think that's fantastic. But it's really important that you do participate in the discussion, do meet the people, because it's a whole lot more meaningful if we've all had our chance to put our bit into it. So I think because you're here, you'll help implement the changes that we're talking about and take those ideas back to your club and make it more than just talk. Now, most of the people in this audience have heard me speak somewhere for the last couple of years as I've been talking up the need for us to change. Now, I've decided, I reckon, this is my last chance. <laughs> <laughs> so I intend to recap on a few thoughts that we've talked about over the last couple of years and maybe throw a couple of theories in. But I hope some of the ideas that I just reignited you today will help stimulate discussion, because that's what I'm trying to do, stimulate the discussion in these breakout groups that you're going to have over the weekend. There is no question that Rotary International is committed to a long-term plan. Individuals involved in that will see the how and even the when and the why differently. But when you look at the introduction of the, I don't know where the country is. It's the pen. The pen? I'm a Kiwi. Pen. <laughs> which way's forward, which way's back? What's forward? Right. <laughs> anyway, as you'll see, that way it's bored. <laughs> the good news is, fortunately, we're a really early plane tomorrow morning. <laughs> I think the future direction in Rotary is reasonably clear, although there's lots of discussion about it. With the future vision plan and the strategic planning linking together, I think that's where our, our process is start. Rotary International can, and districts can and do provide the resources, but it's the clubs that have got to open them. You do it. Every time I do this, you'll do it. <laughs> Just See, I've got delegation. Like, like a cat up front. <laughs> okay, we better get back in. This quotation, I think, is really relevant to Rotary. We're constantly reviewing our alignment, alignment with our changing communities. And Noel's comment about maybe a missed generation might show that we haven't done that so well recently. I just finished reading Jim Collins' book, uh, Good to Great in the Social Sector, and he says this, he says, companies that enjoy enduring success have core values and a core purpose that remains fixed, while their business strategies and practices endlessly adapt to a changing world, end quote. You know, I think it's a really powerful comment for us because we have got such strong core values in Rotary. Now, I often get criticised for comparing Rotary to business. Sorry, I can't help that. That's the world I live in and work in. But I believe, unless the organisation becomes more commercial in the area of planning, we will continue to what I believe is underachieve. I'm not sure if Michael McQueen's here with us this weekend, but those of you who saw that great article he wrote recently about the demise of Kodak clearly demonstrated why I think Jim Collins' quote succinctly has it right. It gave us plenty of messages to consider, and in Rotary, I have no doubt that our core values have got to be protected, enhanced, and lived every day, and that's the starting point for our survival and our growth. <coughs> to demonstrate the importance of clubs, I ask you to have a look at this slide. It is my view that clubs can enter this cycle at any point in the circle, but once they're in that circle, life begins 
and ends with our clubs. This is a very powerful cycle that once understood, I think, should help clubs actually get it. So here we are, we'll gather again to do what we do in Rotary pretty well, we'll meet a bit, we'll meet a bit and we'll talk a lot. You've come from all over Australia, I understand, that's fantastic and you've done it because you care about Rotary and want to make your contribution. I just urge you to share ideas in your breakout and make sure you make your special contribution. The current strategic plan, as you know, has three E's uh, focus. And Rotary International is adding and has added resources to help clubs better serve and work in their particular communities. Under the first leg of strengthening and supporting clubs, we've seen a number of new things launched, and a couple I want to touch on. Uh, um, the new computer-based system called Rotary Club Central that General Secretary John Hugo talked about at our Brisbane Institute. And I think that will eventually change somewhat our structure. It will certainly challenge the current government club role. It will change how we gather data. Note also the regional plans, the regional membership plans, and the Rotary Coordinator team here in Australia have the responsibility to develop that plan with, with Director John and implement a regional plan for this part of the world. It's overdue, and our loss in membership simply cannot continue. But it's right here that I want to emphasise my message of change. If we continue to do the same things, our membership trend will also continue. If we keep doing the same things and expect a different result, we're crazy. We are going to have to change. We have lost over nearly 5,000 members in Australia in a decade. We cannot afford to lose another 5,000. If that's not a message to review how we operate, what is? We've got to ensure that our product is relevant, our brand is one that people want to support. And so brand revitalization, in my view, is a critical part of our way forward in Rotary Australia and internationally. In the area of service, uh, the, the biggies really are, we've got to finish polio, and we've got to get future vision working all around the world. Now, I know there are some pockets of resistance in Australia around future vision. We've got to work through those and make sure that education is in place understand those issues and work through them. New resources here include the Rotary Showcase, which again is computer-based, which gives a platform for clubs to share project ideas and for Rotary International to get some idea of the real work, the work that we do in communities, in our nations, and worldwide. Incredibly, you know, we have no real idea of the value of our work that we do every year. We want to be at the top table when it comes to international philanthropy, philanthropy but we have no idea the worth we bring to that table. This has got to change, and using Rotary Showcase should help do that. Now the third leg is the one that I think we have made some pretty significant progress down under and uh, in Australia and New Zealand. The Kiwis have worked with national PR campaigns for more than a decade now, and we're making some progress here in Australia. The board Bill. has continued to support the Rotary National Board, Bill. has continued to support this area by making more funds available for district PR grants and PR around the eradication of polio. If we're going to get the credit we deserve for eradicating polio, then our PR machine has to be as good as Bill Gates' PR machine, frankly. We're heading in the right direction, in my view. The question of strengthening Rotary brand is a difficult one, one that we're wrestling with in the organisation a bit, I suspect, because there are so many interpretations of our brand and what our brand is around the world. I believe We've got to have a strong international brand which is based on how we act, think and behave. Then we're going to allow for the regional and cultural influences behind that. That Rotary brand simply has no option but to be attractive to the next generations. I, mean, I think we're a long way from that today and research is confirming that and the old statement about a missed generation is further confirmation of that. We need to be careful we don't ignore such research and add it into our recipe as we move forward. Remember, as I said, our core values make up a huge part of our brand and they're not negotiable. But our rules, traditions, and attitudes, in my view, are all up for grabs. So where are these resources helping? I believe there's a real desire in many clubs to become invigorated and to do what their members and their communities want and need. And there's plenty of evidence of that emerging in New Zealand. But how do they do it? Use of social media will help. The collection of data will help. 
The sharing of project ideas will help eradicate polio. It will be huge for this organisation when that day finally arrives. All of these resources and achievements will help shape our future. But again, I stress, it falls back to the clubs to do the work and put the action in place. I believe in Australia and New Zealand, there is a more collaborative environment emerging. Ideas certainly spread far more quickly today when they go viral. The world is so much smaller, yet the need for our work around the world gets greater by the day. It's a combination of all these components that will shape our future. To help, RI is establishing an app store, so it will help clubs identify resource, help identify resource link uh, and link us to Rotary Showcase. It's suddenly quite a different world for our clubs and peers that we work in. Now the key to this is Rotary everywhere has great stories to tell. But too often, they're not being heard. We need a strategy that's clear and gets those stories out at your club, and my club, and our districts, and internationally. I've looked and looked and looked, and I can't find any evidence of any organisation having better or more stories to tell than us. We've got to go home and tell those stories. So when you leave here, I hope you'll take action. If this is to be changed, it's going to start with you and with me. Let me take this final opportunity to clearly put my point about change because I'm, I'm often accused, I think, of driving change for change's sake. In 2002 in Australia, we had 36,000 Rotarians <coughs> helping do the things that Rotarians do. We now hover a bit under 32,000. We have 10 districts in Australia with fewer than 1,400 members. Over half of our districts had a decline in membership this year to date. And we don't have, I don't have the figures till the 1st of July yet, but I suspect there will be more bad news. New Zealand is no better. So don't try and tell me we don't need to change, or this change has changed for change's sake. When are we going to wake up to the seriousness of this issue? Internationally, we've stood around 1.2 million for a number of years. I believe the problem there is masked by huge growth in membership in the East, in India, in Korea, Eastern Europe, Southeast Asia, and from a low base in Africa. But in the Western world, our membership has been declining for some time. It's declining in the United States, Australia, New Zealand, UK. And with the one exception, in Asia, our membership's in steep decline in Japan. Membership is the vital component to getting our work done. And I raise this case day in, day out, because without growth, we're dying. And I think we can all think of organisations right now that lack the vision or lack the courage, or a bit of both, to change that are now dead. And I'm not just talking about Kodak. So I believe your club should reflect your community and reflect the wants and needs of the members. If they don't want change and they're not attracted to new, new members, then you've got to start another club. Rotary International has provided new resources for us. It's over to us. Your community needs Rotary now more than ever. The world needs Rotary more than ever. But in my view, we're in danger of losing that relevance if we don't make the changes that continue to make us relevant to the next generation in this part of the world. So to recap, the core values of service, integrity, fellowship, diversity, and leadership, we just got to protect them and enhance them at every opportunity. They are what creates our brand. They are what make people trust us when we wear that pin. They are our point of difference in what is a very competitive market. If those core values don't resonate with prospective members, then why are we asking them to join? But recognise as an organisation, please recognise we are over-regulated, we are overruled. We are, for rugby union people, we are more complicated than the tackle ball rule. It is just too complicated. Rotary should be simple. Yet we have thousands and thousands of pages of rules in our clubs and our districts at Rotary International. Make your Rotary simple. Make it fun and watch what happens. Meet the needs of the community and your members will then have a strong and active club. Problem solved. I know you can and will meet the challenge because you're Rotarians and it's how we work. Finally, when I've got this opportunity, Adrian and I want to thank you all for the encouragement and support you've given us over the past two years. We wish John and Diana well. I hope we haven't left too much behind us. It needs tidying up. A bit. Um, and you know, there's been some days that have been pretty tough, but knowing of your commitment 
and the work that goes on in the clubs throughout Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, and Indonesia, that gets you through those few days in the tough. Because the vast majority of the days were absolutely awesome and rewarding. We've met so many great people that are doing great things that we would never meet without this opportunity. But I'd be less than honest if I didn't say I have some concerns about where we're heading. I have some concerns here and internationally. I am concerned that we are missing the next generation. But I believe we have got a lot more people now talking about it, thinking about it, and starting to take, to take action. I think the changes are starting to happen in our clubs in Australia and New Zealand, and I'm hearing more and more positive stories, and I thank you for having the courage to go and do it. So, when you leave here, I say to you, go for it, and remember, above everything else I told you, the component that I think we too often forget in Rotary today is have some fun as you go about your work, laugh out loud. <laughs>